YouTube, what's going on? I'm your host, Captain Pops. We're hanging out in my toy vault today, and I've got an epic, epic unboxing for you folks. I've not only got the brand new Xbox Series X that we're going to be taking a look at today, but we've also just got our hands on the Sony PlayStation 5. Both of these things are a beast. They weigh a ton. When I went to GameStop the other day and picked up my Xbox and they handed me the bag, I was not ready for the weight that was delivered to my hand. I had to I, was, I had to grab it with my second hand because these things are beasts. They weigh a ton and they are packed with power. So let's go ahead and start this unboxing and get into it. YouTube, I hope you guys are as excited as I am. I'm a Microsoft fan first, PlayStation second, but I always have both consoles because I love to play the exclusives on both of them. But I'm always Xbox first, so let's go ahead and open up the Xbox and get it out and see what it has to offer on the outside. And we, we know it's been dubbed the mini fridge. It does resemble a small stand-up freezer, if you will. But again, I think it's it was designed for what it was supposed to do, and that's be powerful and extract that heat. And they nail that on the point. But let's go ahead and open it up and see exactly what Microsoft has to offer. Let me know in the comments below if you are Xbox or you're a PlayStation fan. What do you go for first? I want to hear from you folks. I want to hear your thoughts. Do you think we have a big, big jump in gaming? Is this truly next gen? I believe it is. Matter of fact, I know it is, and I can't wait to get into the gaming aspect with these new consoles. This thing is sealed like Fort Knox. It's got tape all over it. I should have uh, de-taped it first, but that's all right. We'll get, we'll eventually get this bad boy opened up. Now, I want to know your thoughts on Xbox not having any launch title games and PlayStation jumping out of the box. And, you know, normally a new console, there's always launch titles. But if you really think about it and go back in time with the other launches, were those games really next gen? Were they really ready for the, you know, the technology that was put into these beasts? No, we normally have to wait six months till the, or spring the next year, and that's when software developers really, really have the time to, to find out what the console has to offer and what they can actually implement into their gaming. So to be honest, we don't truly see next-gen games on next-gen consoles until the following year. So with that being said, I get it, I understand, and I agree with that. So, And I, I'm excited to go back and play all my favorite titles and up the resolution, up the frame rate, and things of that nature. So I'm excited. Really, I just want to go play Fortnite. I want to go play Fortnite with the new update, 4K, 120 frames per second. Super excited about that. But as soon as we open the box... Very nice. It looks very nice just coming right out the box for sure. I love the way this has been packaged. Power your dreams coming right off the top of the box. We've all got dreams, that's for sure. We need something to power them. Wow, this thing is... It's just a, it's just a brick of my goodness. It is so heavy. I wish you guys could see how heavy this was and really dive into it because this thing is absolutely a beast it's a beast when they hit i'm telling you when they handed it to me at gamestop i was like whoa i like almost literally dropped it it almost came out of my hands all right so we have the console sealed in some nice black tape in here we have the new controller we'll start with the new controller and if you notice the one major new difference is the d-pad it has more access points um to pivot and you know and it's very it's got a very nice textured grip on it it's still smooth to the feel but it's got a lot of grippy texture in there so i like that but you know it's but the camera i mean the controller comes right out the box it still uses double a batteries no rechargeable pack coming with it still sticking with the old technology let me know how you feel about that do you prefer it coming with the rechargeable pack or, or do you like batteries and have them on the fly and when your controller dies, you just swap them out and throw some new batteries in. I, for myself, prefer a rechargeable pack. I like to be able to dock it at night, just plug it in so the next day it's always ready to go. But I don't have a problem with batteries either. 
except for if you don't have any in your drawer. Well, then you're just stuck. But in the end, I prefer having a wire controller. I want to be able to plug the controller in. I want the I want every millisecond <laughs> that I possibly can get to be the first to shoot. But uh, next out of the box is just a simple little tag showing you which ports are on the back. And of course, your standard HDMI high-speed cable. You got your power cord and no power brick. So, you know, the power source is inside the console, which I like. No more no more big power bricks behind your console that you have to, or behind your, your TV stand that you have to worry about. Just some basic paperwork will get you started. But let's go ahead and get beautiful packaging. They, they, they packaged it very, very well. Um, um, you know, myself, well done there. Controller looks nice but again really no generation leap here it is basically the exact same controller just an updated d-pad with more access points it, it, it is very clicky i'm sure you've seen several other reviews but it is very clicky for streamers like myself that might come through you know through the stream a lot you'll hear a lot of that clicking but in the end I like that text. I like that textile feel. It lets me know that I'm pressing a button. It lets me know. Uh, it lets me know I did something, and I should expect a you know a result from pressing that button. It, it, but let me know in the comments below if you prefer a clicky or a smooth D-pad. My goodness, this thing. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful, and I'm still. I'm just still blown. I mean, because it really. It, it's like a cinder block. This is like the weight of a cinder block in my hand. So just right on, you know, just basically looking at it right here, as you can see, it's just, as they say, a mini fridge. I mean, it just looks like a miniature fridge. But the thing is designed, everything is stacked up in here. It is a tower of power with a giant fan at the top of it to release all of this heat that the CPU is pushing out. As you can see, it's got a nice little green tint on the inside of these air vents to give it that nice Xbox glow feeling that we were all used to and love. But for the most part, that's all you get is just a mini fridge, big fan at top, you got your power button right here on the front, your disc release button, and your sync button with one USB type A port on the front of the console. Now let's flip her around and take a look at the back of the, the console itself. Looks like we have two more type A USB ports. We have an ethernet port. We have your power port and your HDMI out. It's also got the expansion slot for another SSD that is proprietary to Microsoft. It is designed by Seagate, Seagate but it is proprietary to the Microsoft. If you want to expand your one terabyte storage, that's the way you do it. I, I like the way it looks. I wish I had one here. It's very small, it's very minimal, it's very portable. You need more storage, you slap a card in, you slap a card out. Very convenient and again, it's very small and it's it's very convenient. Definitely if you're looking to travel and bring your storage with you. I like the ease of use. There is a difference with the PlayStation 5 that we will get to because their expansion actually allows you to install the SSD expansion that you, whatever you buy inside the console itself. Xbox is external, little memory card if you will. Also has a small heat exhaust port in the back in case you push something. You know, we all walk into the room, place a DVD or a game on top of our console, walk away. Now when that happens, it's going to block this fan. So it, it, they added a, a little extra exhaust port in the back just in case something tops this bad boy off and covers it up. It's still going to blow that exhaust right out the back. So hopefully we don't see the infamous red ring of death my goodness it's happened to me before it's happened once and i don't want to see it happen again but this thing has been designed to get the heat out and according to all the reviews that i've watched it's doing quite well at that so i don't see an issue it's also got a usb type c on the back as well all right but we're going to go ahead and spin her around here so that is our xbox series type x this thing is beautiful. It's amazing looking. Again, the console itself, definitely a leap. It, you know, it's definitely different. They definitely took a spin on it. They definitely built it for power and not to look pretty. But in the end, I like the end result. I think it's a good looking console and I'm happy with it. The controller, I, I still think the Microsoft controller is the best controller on the market. And I'm okay with them sticking with this model because this is what I'm used to. This is what I like. This is what I've grown, my hands have been, grown to, to, to memorize 
you know, them muscle memories, it's all still here, it's all familiar. You just get more power, but you, your utilization of interacting with the console is all the same. And I'm okay with that, I like that. That means you can literally just put in a new game and get it going. So that's the Xbox Series Type X. Let me know in the comments below what you think about it. Do you like the way it looks? Have you gotten your hands on one? Are you looking to get your hands on one this holiday season? Let me know in the comments below. All right, so we're taking a look at the Xbox Series X. Now, let's get out the other beast, the PlayStation 5. Sony's new next, oh, these things are so heavy. They're so heavy. It's, uh, it's absolutely, I'm telling you, you, just get ready. If you, you haven't gotten your hands on one of these consoles yet, be ready for the wait because it will definitely make you second guess if from what you're used to picking up a console this is about lift this is literally like picking up four of them it is that heavy that much of an increase in weight because we if you want to go weight compared to power it's increased in both in weight it's increased that much just as much as it has increased in power so i'm okay with that i'm okay with it all right now here's the playstation 5 all white you know we're, we're used to this thing being all black forever besides obviously the custom ones that come out but they have now jumped ship it's an all white console coming out the factory playstation 5 beautiful packaging 8k 4k at 120 hdr technology beautiful beautiful looking product but again we're just looking at the box let's do the real review and get this baby out of this box I'm super excited to, 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 first off, I've just, I've been holding this thing for two days because I wanted to do this unboxing with them side by side. So I've been sitting here like it's Christmas for two days just wanting to play this Xbox, but I was determined to give you guys a nice unboxing of them side by side to give you that review. And I hope it pays off. I hope I... I hope I get your subscription by the end of this video. If you're already not a part of the Pirate Posse, I hope you become one. And we'd love to see you back here again. And if you did enjoy today's side-by-side -side review, well, stick around for tomorrow. Click that notification bell because tomorrow we're going to actually be plugging both of these beasts in. And we're going to do it. We got, we got two 4K gaming monitors set up right there. We're going to plug both of these bad boys in. In tomorrow's review, we're going to be checking out the interface. We're going to be checking out some backwards compatibility. And, of course, let's just get straight to the gaming and see if these babies actually can perform from what they say that it can do. I can't wait. I'm excited. If you're excited, let me know. It's definitely, if you're excited, smash that like button. All right, so we got a ton of packaging just coming right off the top. I'm going to scoot this Xbox just a little bit farther out of the way, give us a little bit of space. All right, we got the controller came right out. The controller came right out. Let's go ahead and take a look at the controller because now on the Microsoft side, they did not take a leap and change up the controller. But PlayStation, Sony, my goodness, have they taken a leap and really changed up their controller? This is completely different, as well as all the new adaptive motors that are inside this thing. This is I will say 100% a next gen controller compared to the Microsoft. No leap in generations here, but this bad boy ha is packed full of next gen technology with just the trigger pulls alone. They can have they have adaptive resistance where like say you're 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 about to pull the trigger, it, it can literally change the sensitivity you know in time and make it harder or or easier to pull these triggers. And they're going to leave that up to all the software developers. And we can see how far that little technology can go. You know, resistance triggers that are changed on the fly. That it really excites me. If your gun, like, recoils, you'll feel it jam up on your trigger. I'm excited to see what the software developers can come up with that. Because we all love adaptive controllers. It just gives you a little bit more interaction with the game. It just makes that immersion just a little bit better. And I'm excited. PlayStation, you know, well done. Well done. Beautiful little controller. I do, I, no, this is actually the first time I've had it in my hands. I didn't even give it a little, I didn't even give it a little twist. You know, I'm excited to get the, the PlayStation out of the case. But it feels really well. I will say, let's see, let me, I just want to line them up. I'm like, because it almost has the exact feel. I mean, yeah, they almost line up. I mean, they literally can just 
overlap each other like a shadow. They line up and almost have the exact same design. This one's a little bit more ergonomic, a little bit more rounded. This one's a little bit more smooth. It still has that, that tight PlayStation feel that I'm used to, but definitely has that Xbox just molding feeling that I'm so used to. So PlayStation, well done. I'm excited to have that controller in my hand for the next couple of months and get some some real gaming going on. Cannot wait to play Call of Duty and Spider-Man. All right, and let me know your feelings. Have you got the new controller in your hand? What do you think about it? Are you excited for the next leap in technology? Do you prefer the PlayStation 4 controller? Because as we know, if you're playing any of the PlayStation 5 games, your place, or if you're looking to play older, you know, backwards compatible, you're gonna have to use a PlayStation 4 controller because this will not work with older games. And vice versa, you can't play an older game with the new controller, you have to use an older controller. So it's definitely got a leap in technology and software in that aspect. And again, I'm excited to see what this is really gonna turn into. And it almost looks like the lights I mean, the, like the buttons look like they could have LED lighting behind it, you know, because it's got that very clean white look on all the buttons. It does have the triangle square X and O on it, but I wonder if they're actually going to light up with, you know, with each uh, button's color. That would be really cool. I would be excited to see that. Oh my goodness. And I wish, I wonder if I can get you a close up picture. If you haven't seen a close, like a, a microscopic zoom in shot, there's a texture on these controllers. Well, if you look at it, if you zoom in real close, get out your magnifying glass, it's actually the X triangle O and square all over it, and that's what's giving you that texture feeling. But I mean, it's so small, you have to zoom in and look with your microscope. But it's, it's a really nice touch, and I'm impressed with the extra time Sony put into making this console something new and something different. Microsoft just went right for packing as much as power and being, you know, maintaining being the most powerful console on the market, and they hit that mark. You know, it is still it is 30% more powerful than this PlayStation 5. There's no doubt about that. But it's packed into this little. Oh God, it may be little, but it's so heavy. I mean, right off the bat, look at just look at the difference in the size of these consoles. The PlayStation 5 is massive. And this Xbox Series X, which is 30% more powerful than this bad boy, is just packed into this small mini fridge, if you will. But again, it was designed just to get that power, you know, that heat out of the top of it and just give you the most, the most impressive gameplay you can get in a console today. And Microsoft nailed that. But when it comes to something that I would just be proud to display on my TV stand this thing is absolutely gorgeous it's absolutely gorgeous they I mean just the tapered lines the aesthetic I mean just the tapering on the back here and if you if uh, in between the vents here same thing it has that same texture that the remote controller has on it and when you zoom in it's the little PlayStation lettering all over the plastic very very cool from an aesthetic point this thing is absolutely beautiful. Now, let's go ahead and compare the ports. Because right here on the front of the PlayStation, we do have our disk drive, your 4K Blu-ray player. You got two buttons. Looks like, uh, kinda, I'm gonna, so yes, you got your power button and your DVD ejection button. You got a single USB Type A and a USB Type C on the front, so you are given one more USB port on the front compared to the Xbox single USB Type A. You are also given a USB Type C on the front for the PlayStation. So you're already getting one extra port on the front. Let's spin this bad boy around. Okay, so on the back here we have two USB um, ports. And, which are 3.0, great. We also have our Ethernet port for our high-speed internet, your HDMI out, and again, your power plug input. So again, the power source, the power brick is built into the console. No worrying about trying to find somewhere to hide them bricks behind your TV stand. And now the PlayStation and the Xbox can both be mounted vertically, you know, standing up. Um, the PlayStation 5 does come with this very cool looking stand where you can push it on top of the stand. The bad boy will be floating. 
I, I'm not exactly sure how it works yet, but you are able to, well, let's just give it, a, give it a quick look over. Let's check this out here. Let's see what we got going on. I have, again, this is my very first. Okay, so it looks like there's a screw that go, would go in there, and this bad boy would most likely be clipping there. Uh, ah, there it is. Okay, so it clips into the back. All right. Oh, I think it's got to be spun. Okay, so before I, I get all into that, that's fine. We'll figure out how to mount it later. But I do know from watching a few other reviews that this little stand, if you look on the bottom here, because you, if you just put it up on the top, you don't need the base. But if you do, oh, well, if you put it on the stand, that's how you stand it up. But if you lay it on its side, you don't need the base. And there's, there's little bolts that you can use to mount the PlayStation 5. But what's really cool what they did with it, if you can see here, there's a little hidden spot. So if you're not going to use the stand, you can put the bolts in the little hidden compartment and close it up. And then you'll never lose those, you know, those parts to, to use your stand. I like that. They thought well into the end of the product to make everything streamlined and make everything look good. Now, when this bad boy opens, well, let's go ahead and compare the ports on the back of both of them as well. So, again, you got two USB, two USB here again, both Ethernet, both inputted HDMI and power plugs. So, the difference here is... The SSD. Your expansion is on the back here where you have to buy a memory card, but for the PlayStation 5, you can actually open up the top, and when you buy an extra SSD, you'll actually mount it inside this console so it's it'll be hidden with the rest of the, the hardware. And the Xbox is just a small memory card that plugs into the back. And uh, let me know in the comments below if you prefer the inside technology or the quick and ease of use of just popping in and out a memory card. Let me know what you think. Now, aesthetically, I want to know what do you think between what do you th oh, every time I grab it, it's so heavy. What do you what do you think the difference is? Which console do you actually think looks better? Which do you prefer, the Xbox Series Type X or the PlayStation 5? For again, for myself, this PlayStation 5 looks absolutely amazing. I love the new leap and just a total redesign. I'm all in on it, and I think they did a great job. I really love the new controller. I'm excited to see what the software developers can actually do with the new adaptive motors and the triggers and whatnot and the resistance that can be implemented. I've always been a fan of the touchpad, of course, the built-in mic, all of it, great. I, I'm really happy with this. I think it looks great, but again, I've always been a Microsoft boy. I've always been an Xbox fan from day one. I, I've just been all in with Microsoft and when Bill Gates first implemented the Xbox to the console wars. I've been there since the beginning and I'm still a fan and I'm still going to stick on Microsoft first. But do not count out this PlayStation 5 because I, I have good feeling there's no way this is going to become just my Blu-ray player for the next 3-4 years. Because this thing is a beast to be reckoned with and I cannot wait to see what the software engineers can do with the new games and, and of course we all know Sony has them exclusives and that's why I for myself still like to have both consoles I love to be able to play all the exclusives and look at the differences that the softwares can do with each console and in the end I always turn on my Xbox first though so I'm excited about that but and then that brings up another question there are no next gen release games again. We, we talked about that in the beginning of the video. There are no next-gen games yet. So we're basically just going to jump in, check out our old games, increase the resolution, increase the frame rate, and game that way and just watch all the games that we've already loved so much play even better. And I'm excited for that. But with the PlayStation 5, they chose to still bring out some launch title games and I cannot wait to drop in that brand new Spider-Man, Miles Morales. I'm excited for that. Stick around for tomorrow's video if you enjoyed today's video. We will be plugging them again. We'll be plugging them both in tomorrow and seeing the difference with the, the interface as well as gameplay, the quick game resume. There's a bunch of stuff that we need to check out tomorrow. So stick around for that. If you're just here for the first time, please do subscribe. Smash the like button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. Set it to all so you're the first to know when I drop my video tomorrow as we plug in these bad boys. I cannot wait. It's now time for next gen gaming and we will see you on the next one. <laughs>